Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to shoot a quick video about a few things uh, about modeling and so on and so forth, about some of the stuff I'm sending, etc, uh, etc. Et Pretty much because I wanted to be able to say this without being there. Um, but uh, what I got for you guys is just a, like a small spawners port. Wesley, this is for you. This is uh, just a really fun kit that I've built myself in the past. I highly suggest it. It's fun. It's also a cool mobile suit called a Goof, and it's a lot of fun. I am including a bunch of extra stuff inside, some stickers and treats and uh, extra stuff that I got uh, from buying way too many models. Uh, ben, here's your Jesta. Uh, again, another fun little kit. Uh, and I'm going to go over a couple of things about just Gundam models in general for both of you guys. Uh, this is for Mom. Uh, it's an ornament of the state capitol. Uh, so just make sure she gets it. There's also going to be some stuff for all the ladies. So Jay, Cheryl, Dottie, and uh, Presley all get something as well. You guys will see that as well. Uh, Wesley, this is for you as well. This is a set of tools for building model kits, and I'm going to give you examples of how to use these as well. And the big crazy thing on top of that is a model kit that is as old as I am that we built as children. Uh, it's complete. I double checked it, and it is still wrapped in plastic for the parts that came wrapped in plastic, and the other things that didn't come wrapped in plastic are rubber banded together. So there's a rubber band in there that's, you know, old enough to vote and own property. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I hope you guys enjoy what I'm sending, of course, and also enjoy the hobby because it's a lot of fun. I've been doing it since 2015. Uh, I've, you know, we built when we were kids and everything like that, but... You know, whenever I went to New Zealand, I got back into the hobby uh, because of a store there uh, that me and Kim found that was really neat. Bought a model kit that you can't really find anywhere, and I built it when I got home. The funny thing about that kit, I uh, built it. I didn't do a very good job on it. Like, I, I ruined that kit. And I'm going to show you some tips on how you can not ruin your kits as well because, you know, Knowing what I'm going to share will definitely help in that situation. So, uh, first things first, uh, if you ever have any questions about making something, doing something, ask me. I've been doing this for a long time. I've done a lot. It's something that I do while I work to kind of keep myself going. Uh, keep myself active, essentially, because I need something to do with my hands while I'm talking to people on the phone. Uh, if you ever feel like you need to step away from it, step away from it. It's one of those hobbies you can put down. That's like the best part of it. Uh, don't try too much too early. That's a big suggestion. Uh, just do some, do, do what you want with your model, but also be aware of that, you know, when you first try it out, it's gonna be, you know, either a challenge or just something that you're not used to. No big deal. Uh, it's all a learning experience and it's fun. Um, and you know, as long as it is fun, keep doing it. If it's not, it's not. I mean, hobbies are supposed to be fun. Um, but yeah, uh, you don't have to do everything to every kit that you work on. You can just build it and you can also, you know, take it to the max and paint everything, do with a lot of weathering or a lot of really fun things, make a diorama for stuff. It's great. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to go ahead and switch views and give a example of the tools that I got for Wesley and also how to use them appropriately and some safety tips and so on and so forth. And uh, along with that, I'm going to include some places to get hobby stuff and uh, either online or in person in your area. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to go ahead and cut here. All right, so this is the toolkit that I got for Wesley. Uh, it is from uh, the USA Gundam store. I actually have a little sticker for them here. 
Uh, they're super awesome and they're out of Florida, so they actually get stuff to you pretty quickly whenever you order stuff online from them. Uh, this is their beginner's uh, toolkit, and I just wanted to kind of demonstrate how to either use the tools or also just kind of explain what they are. So the first tool I wanted to show is this one, and this is what's called a part separator. It's a, a small bladed uh, item that's not really a sharp blade, it's a dull blade, but it's essentially intended to go in between two parts that you've put together incorrectly or that you need to take apart for some reason and separate them. So if you try to pull apart parts that are already put together, most likely you're going to break something on them. But if you use a separator, it makes it a lot easier and you're less likely to break them. Just be careful when you do that. Uh, uh, be slow and don't pull too hard uh, and you won't break things. Even if you break things though, you can still fix them. That's the other good thing. The next tool is a set of sharp pointed tweezers and they are super good. These are super nice tweezers, very, very high end, have a very, very sharp point that they come to. Uh, these are intended for uh, sticking on stickers and decals, specifically water slide decals are really, really handy to have a pair of these to be able to put things where they go and they can help out with, you know, detail parts and delicate things that, you know, you run into as a, as a modeler, as it were, but they're super handy. The next tool is the hobby knife. Uh, this hobby knife uh, is, you know, just round, has a nice little lid and the lid has little stops because uh, you don't want this thing rolling around. Uh, it is one where you unscrew it, and then the little slot that's right here uh, is where you put your blade, and then you screw it back in to tighten it in. Uh, it comes with a set of blades. Uh, they are one side sharp, and the other side is where you actually stick it into the hole. And I uh, highly suggest you know making sure you always have a nice sharp one of these around. Uh, Wesley, uh, make sure you uh, you know have parental supervision when you're using this at first and you get comfortable with it and everything like that. It's a tool that you'll use a lot in hobbying and I just highly suggest being um, proficient in, in how to use it properly. I'm going to go th over the, how to do that uh, here in just a moment. But uh, just be very careful. Uh, and one other thing is if you do you know, inevitably it does happen. Everyone cuts themselves no matter how careful they are. It is something that does happen. Uh, just know that it's something that heals up, but it doesn't hurt really bad because of how sharp the blade is. That's a dual edged sword, of course, but uh, it heals quickly because of how precise the cut is. So just be, be a little confident in that, you know, even if you hurt yourself, it shouldn't be too bad. But just be careful. Don't uh, make sure you know you get your dad's help with that uh, until you know you guys are comfortable using that. The next uh, tool in here is actually something I wish I had whenever I started out, and that is these little plastic pieces right here. They are little clear plastic pieces, and they don't seem to have a use until you know what they're intended for. And underneath them are these little labels that say AP1000, P600. Uh, and these are what you use to adhere sanding paper to. And this comes with a small supply of sanding paper uh, in 1000 grit and 600 grit. The lower the grit, uh, the harsher it is on plastic, the higher the grit, the more it'll make it smooth. So what you do is you take the label and you stick it on one of the sticks. So you'll take this label uh, the back of it is like a sticker, so you just peel it off and then stick it on one of the sticks, and then you take the corresponding grit sandpaper and you stick it onto here. And what that becomes is what's called a sanding stick. A uh, more common term for it is actually like a nail file. Uh, it helps whenever you're sanding nub marks, uh, making things smooth that you know are rough, so on and so forth. Something that you do a lot whenever you're making model kits. But it comes in two sizes and it has two sticks, and this makes it so that you know you can easily sand down uh, parts that need to be sanded down. 
Um, if you're needing to sand things that are round rather or, or just curved or something along those lines rather than flat, instead of using a stick, you can just use straight up paper or uh, sponges. This is a sanding sponge that's actually a nail file uh, and they're super handy. This is what I use mainly because I can get them at Sally's in bulk. Um, but this comes with a cool little thing that you can use to make your own sanding sticks. So the last tool is a set of hobby nippers and they are really nice. They're sharp, uh, but uh, they are intended only for plastic. Uh, so only cut out things that are plastic, specifically runners on parts. The big thing here is you don't wanna cut anything that's over three millimeters. So those big tubes you'll see here in just a bit the, the runners, anything bigger than that, you don't want to cut out. You can use these all the way up to that, but uh, try not to cut anything bigger than that though. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut away and show you how to use the knife, the nippers, and sanding uh, appropriately for making model kits. Okay, so I've got a model kit that I'm working on. Here are the instructions right here and I've got my tools out. So I've got my nippers, I've got my uh, hobby knife here. Uh, I've got one that's not round because um, I had a, a desk that was actually kind of like an, at an angle and I've had it roll and fall into my leg and actually stab me pretty good. Uh, so if you can, make sure that you're on a level thing or you have something to balance it against so it doesn't roll off and fall into your leg or just make sure you put the cap back on, whatever. Uh, Regardless, I wanted to show you the proper way to use both the uh, nippers and your hobby knife to get parts prepared when you're building. So I'm building this model kit, and here is the part runner that has all the parts on it. So I need to get uh, part A11 for the step that I'm on. So part A11 is right here, and uh, I am going to go ahead and cut it out the proper way. So when you're cutting out the part, you're pulling it off of these runners and they have these little connecting points that we call gates. Whenever you are removing it, your first instinct is probably going to be to cut as close as you can in one cut. That's not what you wanna do. Uh, reason being is because if you cut as close as you can, it'll leave stress marks. And the stress marks are literally from the plastic becoming stressed, uh, from being pinched or cut uh, too close. And if you cut it far away, uh, it won't get that right on your part. So what you want to do, if you can see, I am going to get this part right here. I need to cut it out in three different places, and I'm going to do that now. So you get your hobby uh, nippers here, and you're gonna wanna cut it as far away on that gate. So there's the, here's the, the runner part, these little big tubes. The gate is the little part that goes from the runner to the actual part. So that's the gate. And you wanna cut it as close to the runner as you can. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all these little gates. Boop. And boop. All right, so I cut this part out. Now, if you look at the part, you can see those little gate parts are still there. Those little nubs of gates are still there. So I need to remove those. Uh, and this is kind of a three-part process. So the first part, get the, get the part out of the runner. The second part is cleaning this little gate here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my nippers and I'm going to um, clip it a little bit closer to the part, but not exactly uh, right up against the part. So you clip, clip it and you leave a little bit of that, that part on there. Now, you can see I've cut a good significant part of it off. And I'm gonna do that for the next one as well. So I'm going to clip this one a little bit closer. And you can see it's a little bit better. 
Now then, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to clip it just a little bit closer. Now then, the reason we do this, like I mentioned, is if you cut it too close, it's going to leave a mark. Uh, now, the mark that it leaves won't matter if you're painting the model. If you're not painting the model, like most Gundam models, you don't have to paint them because they come printed in the color that they're expected. So if you don't intend to paint it, doing it this way makes sense. So this is where the hobby knife comes in. What you want to do with a hobby knife is you always want to cut away from yourself until you have a good amount of control over the blade. And you just want to come in, go to that nub that's left, and just start cutting it away. Cutting it away. And then we want to go back the other way. Always make sure that your hands are out of the way before you start sliding this blade over that. Now then, you always want to make sure that you're not cutting towards any part of your body that it's going to hit. Now notice I'm, looks like I'm cutting towards my hands, but I'm actually far enough away that there's no way I can cut myself. Always make sure that you are setting yourself up to not have to pay what's called the blood price. Now, the blood price is any time you have to, you know, any time you accidentally cut yourself doing this, you're going to bleed. It's a fairly common thing to happen. Most modelers call it paying the blood price. You know, usually you want to say a small prayer to whichever deity you follow or believe in that takes sacrifices and blood, and, you know, just offer it up and let it happen. But you just keep cutting it until that little nub is gone. Here's this other nub. Come in, cut it very slowly. And the good thing about using a razor blade, you don't have to use a lot of force. You just slowly, slowly bring it over it. And it'll just keep getting it out of there. And keep cleaning it until there's nothing left. Then you can go over with your fingernail, and feel if there's anything, any imperfection that's there. If you have any imperfection that's there, that's where you go back and you sand it down. And if you look, you can see that little nub there is now down to the surface pretty well. And then on top of these, there are these two nubs here, that one and that one. And if they're not perfect, if you still feel it with your nail and you don't want to keep using your, your knife, that's where your sanding stuff comes in. And you have your sanding stuff that is a part of yours. This is just what I have right now. And I'll just go over it a couple of times like that. Again, feel it. Go over it again. And then feel it. Now then, if you notice, I flipped this over twice. So pink side is higher grit, and the back side is, the, is a is, I'm sorry, pink side is lower grit, white side is higher grit. And I know it's kind of frou-frou looking, but these are some of the best ones that I could find. I get these at Sally's. They last forever. I've done, with this one alone, I did two master grades, and that's a lot of parts to cut out. Um, but just sand it until you can't feel it anymore, and you haven't rounded the part off, or you haven't made it look different because of the sanding that you've done. And then if you look at the part, you can't see really where I cut it out. You may see a little bit of discoloration, but nothing significant. And that's what we're going for, is we want to have no significant nub left. And that's how you use a pair of nippers, a hobby knife, and sanding to properly cut out a part for a kind of model that you don't plan on painting. Now, if you plan on painting it, you just want to make sure it's smooth. So you don't care if it leaves a mark or anything like that. So just a heads up, that's how to do it the proper way. But uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and cut here. And just to wrap things up, I uh, just wanted to say, if you need anything, ask me. Uh, I can help out with this sort of thing pretty well. I've been doing it for a while. I've done a lot of it. And if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask. That's what I'm here for. 
Um, I, I really love the hobby. It's a lot of fun. It's very relaxing and it's something I really enjoy. I'm glad I get to share that with you guys. So enjoy. If you need anything, let me know.